Hello and welcome to this evening's service for the 8th Sunday after Trinity. After Trinity? My goodness me, doesn't that sound like the year is going fast? Or is it going faster because I'm getting older? And if that's the case, that explains why our younger years seem just like yesterday. It seems like only the other Saturday afternoon I was a youngster shouting at the telly while watching the wrestling. I wonder, can any of you remember the likes of Mick McManus or Big Daddy and, of course, Giant Haystacks? But I also have a bit of a guilty pleasure in the here and now. I like watching boxing. Was that sharp intakes of breath I could hear? Yep. You heard right, boxing. So how fortuitous it is for me that this evening's reading is about a wrestling match and how fortuitous for us all that Jane will be reflecting on this very reading. But first, let's put thoughts of boxing and wrestling to one side and sit quietly for a moment and think about our journey here today and how we are feeling now. Are we ready to give God our full attention? Then let us come together to share in God's love, to lift our hearts and minds in praise and worship, to seek God's blessing with a new and deep experience of God's power and generosity. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, starting to read at verse 22. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Good evening. Last week, Carol talked to us about books and storytelling. It was great to hear about the books that she and Glyn like reading. Personally, I like a good Agatha Christie or any novel where there is a mystery to be solved. And our Bible reading tonight is certainly a bit of a mystery. Who was that man that Jacob was wrestling with and why did he ask for a blessing and end up with a limp? So let's delve a bit into this mysterious story together this evening. In the story, Jacob is afraid. He's about to meet his slightly older twin brother Esau for the first time in 22 years. They hadn't exactly parted on good terms. In fact, Esau was planning to kill Jacob. Do you remember the story of Jacob 
disguising himself as hairy Esau in order to deceive their father Isaac into giving Esau's blessing, the blessing of the firstborn, to him. And so Jacob, not Esau, had received Esau's blessing that he would have a wealthy life and be lord over all the brothers. Esau had been furious about the theft and Jacob had needed to leave the family home quickly. But here Jacob is 22 years on and God has told Jacob to return to the family home. Jacob thinks that's not going to end well for him. But God has reassured Jacob that he will go with him, that he will do him good and indeed that Jacob has his own blessing to claim, a promise of numerous offspring in the generations to come. Jacob is caught between the real threat of death at the hands of his brother Esau and trusting God's protection and promise. So the day before this nightly wrestling match, Jacob does everything he can to protect his property, his family and himself. He's divided his property and staff into two groups so that if one is attacked, the other has a chance to escape. He organises a generous present to be given to Esau ahead of him. And finally, he sends his close family with himself to come in the rear. With all the organisation of the day over, Jacob finds himself alone for the night. And given what he is about to face the next day, the worry and the fear that was in his mind, it's understandable that he had a sleepless night. I think we all know those nights when we can't sleep because we are wrestling with something. And there are seasons in our lives when we feel like we're constantly wrestling one thing or another. This mysterious story holds an encouragement for all of us who wrestle. It recognises that there are two elements to our struggles. There's the outer struggles of circumstances, other people, the things we can't control. Jacob had tried to stay in control of circumstances by planning to thwart Esau's plans to destroy him. By doing that, he hoped that he would make sure that God's promises to him would come true. So I think he began the wrestling match trusting in his own power and his own strength. But there comes a point when he is weakened. His hip socket is put out of joint and he is forced to let go of his own power and trust the power of the one who had made the promise. This outer struggle shows that all along there was an inner struggle. Inside we can wrestle with our thoughts and feelings, with our insecurities and motivations. Our faith is pushed to its limits and we cry out to God. And this is what Jacob does. He says, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He finally looks to the source of the blessing. He lets go as he lets in God. Through his limp, he now bears in his body the mark that while he is weak, God is strong. It's also interesting to reflect on what was stopping Jacob trusting God. He tells us in a passage just before this story, he didn't feel worthy of receiving God's blessing and protection. But now Jacob sees himself in God's eyes, eyes that reflect back to him that no matter how small and minuscule Jacob's faith was, God's faithfulness was even bigger. That no matter how unworthy he felt, God was still offering a generous gift. The story shows us that God is with us in our wrestling throughout our lives. Happily, God's faithfulness is much bigger than our faith. He offers his promises to us as a free gift. 
If you have been grabbed by this story, I encourage you to read this week what happens next. You'll find it in Genesis 33. The next day, Jacob discovers that God has already prepared the way. Esau no longer bears the grudge. Indeed, despite Jacob having stolen Esau's blessing, Esau has been blessed with abundance anyway. Normally, wrestling matches are about strength and power over someone, which we see in the likes of Big Daddy and Giant Haystacks. Usually in a wrestling match, there are winners and losers. But in Jacob's wrestling match, God's power means that Jacob's weakness makes him a winner. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness, so tells us St. Paul. Jesus' life, death and resurrection are the ultimate example of this. In Jesus, God incarnate, we find the eyes of God looking at us, eyes that reflect back to us that no matter how small and minuscule our faith, God's faithfulness is even bigger. That no matter how unworthy we feel, God offers a generous gift. My prayer for us all this week is that we will continue to trust in God's presence with us and God's faithfulness to us, that we would accept his generous gift and step together into the abundance of life on offer. As we start these prayers, let us pause to thank God for all we have got right this week and seek God's peace for the burdens we carry. To the bidding, Lord, we offer what we have. The response is, hear our prayer. Lord, we offer what we have. Hear our prayer. And so we pray for the leaders of the nations. Inspire those whose decisions affect our lives. May they think often of the people whom they serve. May they work for the good and happiness of all. And we pray for the leaders of the church. In our time, may they know your presence as they wrestle with the issues we all face. Grant that through the plans and actions of church and state, we, your people, may work to bring your kingdom near. Lord, we each offer what we have. Hear our prayer. Lord of compassion, we ask that we may pray alongside those caught in the pain of life, especially for all who are vulnerable and at risk during this time. We pray for those who are not safe at home. those who have fallen into hardship. Those with fragile health. Those who feel abandoned and alone. O Lord, draw near to all who suffer as we pause to remember any known to us who need God's healing touch. And we pray for those trapped by modern-day slavery, for those who have no home, and for all who no longer live in safety. We pray for those enslaved by forced labour, forced marriage, child slavery and by ex sexual exploitation. 
We pray for all who live in fear, who have lost their sense of humanity. And just as Jacob wrestled with God, may we wrestle with injustice and find ways to give hope to the vulnerable and in so doing find our peace with you. Lord, we offer what we have. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you have been through death yourself. Be near those who are dying. Make yourself known to those who have died. Give peace and comfort to all who grieve. So let us take a moment to remember those who have gone on before. Lord, comfort all whose tears fall through tragedy or heartbreak. Enter the silence and hold us tight. And may you send your peace to this world, peace to this country, peace for our friends and community, peace for those who care for the sick and suffering, peace for the grieving and peace for our families and loved ones. O oh God, send the peace you promised and help us to share your peace with others. Lord, we offer what we have. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we pray the collect. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray the Benefice Prayer together. Ever-living, ever-loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant that we may honour you in our prayer and praise. Share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen. And so we conclude our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. It has been good to share this time with you and we look forward to worshipping with you all again next week. And in the meantime, we hope and pray that during the coming week you will know and feel the comfort of God's presence surrounding you. And now our closing prayer. May the sun warm your soul and the moon be gentle above you 
May the Creator hold your hand and the Christ walk in your footsteps. May the Spirit dance in your playing and grace be found in your way. Amen. Love 